twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rang there, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave Your word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let us pray. Almighty God and everlasting Father, who was the fount of all wisdom, the living truth which founded the world, our life and our light, it is you who have preserved and sustained us to this day. You have given us hearts to desire you, strength to seek you, and minds to know you. To you alone we owe all that we are, all that we know, and all that we desire, all for which we hope, all to which we aspire, every breath we breathe. To you alone be all glory, laud, and honor. We give you thanks for all that this day represents. Lessons learned and exams completed, pages read and reports written, recitals played and art shows hung, Hard work rewarded and procrastination sometimes resisted. Semesters ended and sleepless nights vindicated. Game days won and tailgates celebrated. Mock rocks danced and Central Hall of Paloozas performed. Conversations had and arguments amended. Tears shed and laughter shared. Hurts suffered and shoulders cried on. Friends made and memories treasured, journeys begun and journeys ended. How can we possibly thank you for these gifts and ten thousands besides? As we conclude this season and commence another, we commend these proceedings and ourselves into your care. Go before us and go behind us. Go above us and go beneath us. Walk beside us and dwell within us. Protect us round about and guide our steps. By your good will and loving kindness, shown finally to our race by your Son, Jesus Christ, receive this our offering of our souls and bodies, dedicated to your service and for your glory. May it be a fragrant aroma before you. We come before your throne of grace this day with boldness, not on account of our righteousness, but because you have inscribed upon us the name which is above every name, that of Jesus Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Please remain standing. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Please be seated. Welcome to the 166th commencement exercises of Hillsdale College. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is our largest crowd. Uh, They've been getting bigger and bigger anyway, and this year we tried to suppress the name of the speaker, but we were unsuccessful. <laughs> I welcome Vice President Pence, and more importantly, his wife Karen, who, who will soon have 
be honorary graduates of our college. I thank his staff, uh, the advance team and the Secret Service who are efficient and kind. And I recognize among them especially Stephen Ford and Ryan Murphy, who in recent years were Hillsdale College students and we never thought they were going to work out. <laughs> Where are they, anyway? Yeah. You should go ask them how they ever got in the place they're in. My job is to, I'm Larry Arn, I'm the president of the college, and my job is to explain the purpose of this ceremony because we all have a part in it. It's for all of us. It's something we've all produced. It is not ending, it is commencing. We are beginning something. Each of us is essential to what happens here today. None of it would have happened without every group who is here and in the case of the individual seniors, without many individuals who are here. <clears throat> the purpose of the college from its first day is the protection or per perpetuation of civil and religious freedom and intelligent piety through sound learning. We are commencing to live a good life and learning and faith added to moral character are the essentials of that good life. We call it commence because these seniors have qualified themselves to commence that life. They won't master it ever and not even nearly completely as they keep at it, but they have surely been at it here. You notice a lot of us are wearing robes. I'm going to say a word about that in a minute, but first I want to recognize and thank those of you who don't have a robe. You're out of uniform. You're civilians. We often talk of you, of, uh, of you that way around here, as in one of my favorite things to say when I see students doing something, I always say, behave yourself, kids. There are civilians around. Most of you are civilians, and you fall into two groups. I'm going to thank the most important civilians here first. How did these seniors come to be? How did they get here? They have parents, families. They have grown up to do this. This is not easy. Not easy even to get in here. Very hard to complete it. To complete it with honor, that's such a thing, such an achievement. They struggle and they strive to do it. And you are the ones who've helped them. What have you done since they came, right? What you've done is you've done the phonathons, and the prayer groups, and you've referred people to the college, and you host events all the time. We have a lot of events at the college, and I just noticed there's always several tens of thousands of dollars of free laborers uh, standing around, and they always have parent on their sticker right here. And why? We have their kid. It's a common production. They flock to Parents Weekend. I think the record attendance is 980 parents at Parents Weekend. It's a, a, you're a marvel to us. And I know you're not as sad today as you were the day you left them off here four years ago, because now it's kind of done and you don't have to pay for it anymore. <laughs> and you're proud of what they've achieved. Would the parents please stand up? The rest of you not wearing a uniform are friends of the seniors and of the college. You stand for millions of others. I don't know how many people watch the stream of this, but it'd be a lot. There are about four million people who are on the mailing list of Hillsdale College. They help us in a million ways. Some of them give us money, but in other ways. They talk about us, they help us meet people, they uh, broadcast the message of high learning that the college is the college's purpose. And without that, you know, I made a joke about the parents paying for it, and they do, but you know they don't pay for quite half of it. Other people, people who don't know these seniors, they pay for it. Why would they do that? They don't get anything back. 
Come to think of it, why would the parents exhaust themselves when these kids are 20 years old and 21 years old to help them grow up right? And they don't get anything back either. The answer is love. It is a large community of love. Thank you, friends, all of you, wherever you are. We welcome you. In the academic community, we are led by the faculty. They have uniforms and they have stripes on them to indicate their rank. David, the provost, is a graduate of the University of Kansas. And so he's wearing the robe of the University of Kansas. Uh, that's his unit. And he's wearing the three stripes that go with the Doctor of Philosophy. Dean Smith, is he up here? No, Smith's not here. Okay, Pastrito, I know where he comes from. He's wearing the bright red robe of the Claremont Graduate School, where I happen to have agreed from. And, and uh, he's got his three stripes too. And that's his credential to lead here in the way that he does. I'm wearing the robe of the college. I have a medallion. This college is medallion. When I came to work here, it's my first job in a college. I didn't know any of that stuff. And they were fitting me for this robe, and I didn't know what color it should be, anything. I didn't need to know. People around here know that. And I said, wait, there are too many stripes. And I have four. And the lady said, you're the president, silly. <laughs> Do you see what that means? In formal occasions, we are designated to do what we do. And of course, it's never just authority, it's responsibility. What do they do, these faculty members? 30 years of learning at the least, all of them, many more than that now. Used to being the brightest people they know, and what they do is they deepen their knowledge of a thing, never to get rich. It's a poor way to do that, isn't it? And, uh, you know, they'd like to make a little more. But um, why, why did they do that, right? And then they take these, and these are 18 to 21 years old. It's an amazingly conventional college. If you see them and they look kind of like grown-ups, it means they're seniors. And if they look kind of like, fresh, like little kids, it means they're freshmen. And the transition goes in between. You can, I can walk on somebody else's campus and recognize it now. And they, you know, they're drinking from a fire hose. They're young and ignorant. And these people are learned. And they talk to them into the night, in class and out. They stay up with them when they need it. They correct them when they're wrong. They counsel them when they're down. They inspire them. They give them the most precious thing, the thing they've spent their lives learning. There, that activity is the activity of a college. I ask the faculty to stand up so we can thank them. Anybody not has, have his papers graded yet? <laughs> no, nobody. It's an inside joke, but I'll make it outside. I've never met any human being, however great a faculty member, who likes to grade papers. But we do it. Three have won distinctions this year that I always mention at this ceremony. We give the Doherty Award for Teaching Excellence to a junior member of the faculty in the fall and a senior member in the spring. And uh, this year's winners are Dr. Courtney Mayette of Chemistry and Dr. Nathan Sleeter of Philosophy and Religion. Would they stand up, please? <laughs> they are selected by a committee of the faculty, and it's a role of honor, the people who won that. The senior class conspires every year to, to uh, pick a professor of the year. 
And this year, it's Adam Carrington of the Politics Department. Would he stand up, please? Can I hear? What are you doing over there, Adam? Oh, you're a marshal. I see. Yeah, yeah. I, I was about to revoke his award. I thought he wasn't here. <laughs> Two of our faculty members are retiring after very long service. Uh, George Angel of Theater and Speech has been here for 34 years. He's been chairman of that department for 22 years. He's directed 55 productions here. And the ones he lists are an insight into his character. Uh, Tommy to Tempest Tossed. Iron Bird Fusion to Mirror of the Invisible World. I never heard of either of those two, but he, he, he likes them. He's been the rock of the theater and, and speech department for much longer than I have been here. And we are deeply grateful to George Angel. Please stand up. Maybe George is not here. Is he already going to seed? <laughs> From the chemistry department, we have a biologist who's been here for 21 years. He's an interesting guy for a biologist. He's a quiet guy, you might think that. But uh, he's a saxophonist. He plays a mean jazz saxophone. I've heard him do it. And uh, he restores cars and makes them beautiful, old cars. And he knows everything about them. And in his efficient, caring way, he has been a tireless friend to our students for those 21 years. And we thank and ask to stand up Bob Miller, please. They didn't come. Hey, Brandon, where's George? Tell him shame on him. See, they're retired now, what do they care? <laughs> you know, I'm not as grateful as I was a minute ago. <laughs> now, the Provost Wayland just noticed that this is the last commencement of two people who haven't put their name on the list because they're very contrary people. And they are former provost, former acting president of the college, Bob Blackstock and his wife, Jackie. And I would like to ask them to stand up, please. <laughs> they're, uh, they're retiring in December when few people retire, probably because they want to hog glory for themselves. So, actually, Jackie's not like that. <laughs> There's so many of you. I wonder if you can hear all this, apparently. I congratulate the seniors. They, too, are wearing a uniform. It designates their rank. They have some ribbons. All of the ribbons are granted by the college and by groups that they uh, join that are recognized by the college. And the ribbons indicate some distinction or another. But the chief distinction is their black robe, which is long. If you go to college in Oxford, which I did for a little while, they give you a short robe. They don't actually make you wear it. It looks kind of stupid. <laughs> and, uh, and that's to show that you're a novice, an undergraduate. They get, and, and you're not to wear it. It's against the rules to wear it after you get your degree. These seniors are gonna keep these robes. They're gonna keep them as a designation of their rank. They have joined the educated. They are not novices anymore. The achievement that they've made is of course chiefly theirs, each one. Because just try, go home tonight and do it. Uh, they, they won't because they're done with that for a while. Go home and get some great book and sit down and study it for three hours. 
It's an enormous test of the soul. These seniors have passed that test, not once and not twice, but daily for a long time. That's what they've done. And of course, it's their effort and their thinking. And therefore, it's natural and right for them to think that this is their day. And that is true only in part. Because, of course, everybody else I've named so far, and for each one of these seniors, each of the other seniors are essential elements of their education. The word college means partnership, and it will not work unless we all work together and can rely upon one another. And we can here. And so, at the same time that they're extremely grateful to their teachers and to everyone here and to you who helped make all this possible, they are also aware that this has been an enormous effort to them. But I remind them, and I remind all of you, it is not your effort alone. Remember always, all your life, to be grateful. And we will remember to be grateful to you. There's a kind of a scandal about this senior class. Uh, they, they can, this is not the scandal. They come to senior dinner and these are uh, very good singers and uh, violin players and cello players. And they make longer toasts than the single senior class typically does. They're a wordy bunch. Uh, that's fun and interesting about them. They are by the numbers we have, and the numbers are no academic numbers, you know, test scores and grade point average. They're of course not the measure of a quality of a person even of the intellectual quality of a person. But these are the best qualified ever. And uh, I think next year's might be better. <laughs> but having said that, they're just like seniors in this. They all think that the freshmen and sophomores are nerds. <laughs> and that the quality of the college is falling off sharply. <laughs> and you know, that's the first time I ever heard anybody say that. <laughs> Except when it was said about them. Here's the scandal. Hillsdale College is very unusual. For a liberal arts college, it's possible it's unique. It's, it's rare anyway. We have the same number of boys and girls. Next year's class looks like it might have a few more boys. And the academic profile, if you look at those numbers I talked about, for the boys and the girls is exactly the same, right? And on the other hand, girls make better grades than boys. About a tenth of a point on the average grade point average. And I'm about to ask the top 10 to stand up and you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> Would the top 10 graduates please stand up? Anna Meckel, the valedictorian, uh, biochemistry, I'm sorry to report, has a 4.0. We don't like that to happen around here. Uh, Del Delaney Lehman, 3.96 or something. Somebody gave her an A minus, and I'm going to give whoever that was a bonus. <laughs> and they were all girls. Right? And what does that prove? If you put those numbers together with that fact I just showed you, it means that boys are just as smart as girls. They're just more often stupid. <laughs> but in honor of the boys, I would like Jacob Weaver, the 11th student in the class, to stand up. <laughs> Jacob is uh, going to University of Michigan Law School, right? Yeah. And I had him in class when he was a freshman. I thought that boy was just dumb as heck. <laughs> so.
The, uh, the valedictorian and the salutatorian stand up, please, so everybody can just look at you too. Uh, we pick an outstanding senior man and woman. It's a rigorous process that involves all the groups in the college. The interview, it's hard. It's a big vote, too. I always vote for myself. I never win. <laughs> and there are always exceptional people. Uh, Dustin Platten is going into a life of charitable service in a hurry. Madison Frame is going to the U University of Michigan Graduate School in Biochemistry. And she, too, has high charitable purposes. And somebody told me that they're engaged. Is that true? Stand up, you two. Now, you're, you're all wondering what I'm wondering. If you look at Madison and you look at Dustin, why would she marry him? I don't know. That's happened once before. Zach Howard married Elizabeth Peters, Betsy Peters. There have been 400 Peters kids come here. And Betsy is one of the smartest girls I ever met in my life, as is Madison. And you know, Zach and Dustin, you know, they're, they're pretty clever. <laughs> I thank the senior class officers. Uh, we together decided to uh, uh, invite the vice president, and of course that introduces lots of moving parts and trouble for everybody in the world. And I, I told them that, and I said, it'll be great, but, and you know, they, it, 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 there's a political article about it this morning, and it's uh, really delicious because all the bad parts are false. But, uh, but they said that I just decided this, right? Well, I don't do it that way. I can, if, I, if it weren't true that I could, then it'd be chaos, right? But I did it with them. And they're just a pain in the tuchus. And uh, so I would like senior class president Rosie Lane and vice president Noah Weinrich and secretary Laura Nitzel and treasurer Casey Reeves and social chair Claire Hughes and fundraising chair Peyton Bowen to stand up, please. Would the members of the senior class stand up and please be recognized, please? Thank you. Rosie Lane's going to give a speech later as senior class president, and I don't know if it's going to be good, but I'm assured it's going to be short. Our commencement speaker is a man of constant and urgent business. His are the affairs of war and peace of a great nation and the world. He is the second executive in our constitutional republic. Think how far that is from what we do here. The time and energy of our college are consumed in things that happened long ago or ever abide. We have almost no courses on any particular subject of public policy. People always think, uh, you know, I myself, for example, if I didn't go on the radio pretty regularly, I wouldn't read the news at all. It's not true, but I read it more than I would, and I read it as much as I have to. We teach old stuff, right? Because we haven't commenced yet. That's happening today. Do you see how that makes us vulnerable? Because, you know, we don't really have any way to defend ourselves. We're not uh, people of urgent, well, I kind of am a person of urgent affairs. I have a lot of work to do, and I'm a reasonably prudent man, maybe, but uh, the kind of thing that the vice president does, people like that, they have power. And you know, tyrants, when they have power, this is the first kind of thing that they abolish. Because why? We're not learning here that the latest guy you met 
with a crest on his shoulder or something is God himself. We're actually learning about God himself. And so tyrants don't like that. Do you see why it matters so much how they rule? And in a free republic, its glory is that it protects all the rights, including the highest rights that are exercised here. The vice president is obviously complicated to address our body by the constitutional office that he holds, second in the land. Doesn't matter whether you voted for him or not. If you love the constitutional republic in the representative form that's supposed to protect our liberties, he's doing that right now. But is he, I wonder, qualified by reputation and character? Also qualified by his inner nature, by the thing that moves him to address us here today. My favorite thing among many that I have heard him say, he said on this campus, and it was printed in Primus. First he quotes the story from Calvin Coolidge to show the nature, as Calvin Coolidge conceived it, of the executive office. Coolidge writes, the day I became president, my son, this son died soon after this. He lost his son. Had just started to work in a tobacco field. And one of his fellow laborers said to him, if my father was president, I would not work in a tobacco field. And young Calvin Coolidge, the junior, said, if my father were your father, you would. Then the vice president goes, goes on to say of his own attitude to the young. If the president, he's speaking of the presidency in this speech, has the true interest of the young at heart, he will not flatter them nor let him, them adore him. For in flattery is condescension and in adoration is direction. Nor should it be the president's business to presume to direct them. It is difficult enough to do right by one's own children. No one can be the father of a whole continent's youth. To be successful, statesmen have to be assertive people. To be great, they must bow before necessary things like work and the care of their own children and before elevated things like learning and like God. These later things are quite beyond their power, and they must not resent, but they must respect and protect that. Mike Pence is qualified to be here today because he wrote those things right there. Please welcome the Vice President of the United States. Thank you all. And thank you, Dr. Arndt, for that uh, warm and remarkable welcome. I need to remind myself to never follow Dr. Arndt to a podium again. <laughs> he has become my friend. I, I don't use the word mentor loosely, but President of Hillsdale College has been a mentor to me. Dr. Arn, under your leadership, Hillsdale College has risen to national prominence as never before, educating a generation to carry freedom forward. And these students and this nation are in your debt. Would you join me in showing your appreciation for the 12th president of Hillsdale College, Dr. Larry Arn.
Before I get started, let me make a promise. Promise to all these students, unlike Dr. Arne, I will not be asking you to define the good. <laughs> to the Board of Trustees, to these distinguished members of this remarkable faculty, former Governor Orr, Congressman Wahlberg, to all our distinguished honorees and guests, to all the proud parents and all the family and friends gathered here, and most importantly, to the extraordinary men and women seated before me today, the class of 2018, thank you for giving me the honor of addressing this 166th commencement ceremony for this beacon of liberty and American ideals that is Hillsdale College. And let me begin by uh, bringing greetings from a good friend of mine who's also a great admirer of Hillsdale College. He asked me to pass along his congratulations to the class of 2018. I bring greetings and congratulations from the 45th President of the United States of America, President Donald Trump. You know, Karen and I are really honored to be back at this exceptional institution and to be a part of this commencement. And we're also humbled by the recognition that will be bestowed on us today. I mean, allow me to commend you, Dr. Arne, and the faculty for having the especially good judgment to honor my wife with an honorary degree today. I guarantee you that if you were looking at the academic averages in our family, they would reflect the academic achievement of the top 11 graduates of this class. My wife is a career educator, an author, an artist. She's traveled across our home state and across this country supporting worthy causes, benefiting vulnerable children and our military families. Would you all just join me in thanking the second lady of the United States of America, Karen Pence, for who she is and all she does. For my part, I've always marveled at Hillsdale College's long and often lonely stand for freedom in America. This college was founded at a time of great consequence in the life of our nation, a time when Americans were deeply divided over the meaning and purpose of our country and whether, as the Declaration of Independence forcefully states, that we are, in fact, all created equal. But for the founders of Hillsdale College, the truths of the American founding were just that, true for all people at all times. In 1844, those men and women did what no other college had done up to that time. Hillsdale College prohibited any discrimination based on race, religion, and gender at its very founding. They established this institution to provide sound learning necessary to preserve the principles and the promise of America. And so has Hillsdale done in every era since. Inscribed on Central Hall, I'm told, are the words, may earth be better and heaven be richer because of the life and labor of Hillsdale College. And so it has been true. But I also know these words will continue to ring true for generations to come because of the men and women of the Hillsdale College class of 2018. This is an extraordinary group of men and women who have accomplished extraordinary things in their time here, and they've only just begun. <laughs> 366 strong, representing 37 states and five countries, you've persevered through all of the most challenging and transformative educations anywhere in the country. Now, it seems at times that we live in an age of grim relativism, but here, this class has seen the power of unchanging truth to change lives. You've learned that character is destiny and that it's essential to self-government and that right conduct is its own reward. 
And it seems we, we live in a time where too many disregard that wisdom of the past that Dr. Arne spoke about so eloquently. But here, you've been grounded in the traditions and teachings that are our greatest inheritance in America. And the teachings and traditions that will always be the surest foundation of a boundless American future. In a word, your education at Hillsdale has taught you not what to do, but what to be. And today you'll receive a diploma that's been minted in independence and tempered with truth. So for all you have done to reach this moment, class of 2018, give yourselves a round of applause. We're proud of each and every one of you. But today is a day of celebration, but it's also a day of appreciation. Especially, I know I speak for this class when I say it's especially true for those who believed in you and helped bring you to this day. Your friends, your professors, and of course your wonderful families. I mean, let's be honest. No one comes to a commencement to hear the speaker. In fact, if you took every commencement speaker this college has ever had and laid them end to end, it'd probably be a good thing. But all of you gathered here, gathered around this incredible class, are here to revel in the accomplishments represented by those in the cap and gown. But they know that today is as much your accomplishment as theirs. So before we go one step further, class of 2018, would you mind just standing up for a second, turn around, catch the eye of your loved ones, your brothers, sisters, grandparents, and especially your impoverished parents, and just show them how much you appreciate all they've done to bring you to this day. Thanks for that. Today, you, the members of the class of 2018, will graduate from this extraordinary college and enter new careers and endeavors. So before I go further, I'd like to take a moment to talk about what good timing you have. You'll be glad to know the America that awaits your energies and ambitions is experiencing a new era of opportunity and optimism. You're beginning your careers at a time of growing American economy and restored American stature at home and abroad. And I can personally attest from my travels across this nation, faith in America is rising once again. <laughs> On the world stage, you've seen America embracing our role as leader of the free world with action just this week on Iran, North Korea, and Monday, America will lead the world again when we open our new embassy in Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Here at home, businesses large and small are growing again. More than 3.1 million new jobs in the last 15 months. Unemployment is at a 17-year low. And the best news for all of you new graduates is that there's more job openings in America today than ever before in our nation's history. And let me say it's no accident or coincidence. Faith in America is rising again because President Trump and our entire administration have been advancing the very principles that you learned here in the halls at Hillsdale College, the principles that have always been the source of America's greatness and strength. In this White House, as the President has said, we fight for the West with all our minds and our wills and our souls, as he said in Warsaw, Poland. We've been expanding freedom, cutting taxes, rolling back the regulatory state, returning authority to the people and to the states, and we've been upholding the Constitution of the United States and defending all the God-given liberties enshrined there, including the unalienable right to life. <laughs> Trump
Truth is, when you leave this place, you're going to find an America filled with promise, being built again anew on a foundation of personal responsibility and individual freedom. But I also believe that faith in America is rising again for one more reason. For despite the fact that we live in a time when traditional values and even religious convictions are increasingly marginalized by a secular popular culture, a time when it's become acceptable, even fashionable, to malign religious belief, in this time, I believe with all my heart that faith in America is rising as well. Now, full disclosure, people who know me well know that I'm a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order. As the good book says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. In fact, it was 40 years ago this spring that I put my faith in Christ as a freshman at another liberal arts college, not very far from here. And while in some places deeply held religious belief is becoming more rare, leading some to claim that America's rich faith tradition will soon be a relic of our nation's past, it just isn't so. Facts are facts. Faith is rising across America. I see it every day. In communities large and small, in the way Americans respond in good times and in great hardship, the faith of the American people shines forth. I see it as I travel across this great country as countless Americans take the time to tell us often with great emotion the sweetest words we ever hear. I'm praying for you. And I know they mean it. And I see it right now, right here at Hillsdale College, an institution founded by those who proclaim themselves grateful to God for his inestimable blessings. Even as many continue to forecast the decline of religion in American life, the truth is, as President Trump recently said, this is a nation of faith. And faith continues to exert an extraordinary hold on the hearts and minds of a growing number of Americans. In fact, the percentage of Americans who live out their religion on a weekly basis, praying, going to church, reading and believing in the Bible, has remained remarkably consistent over the decades, even as the population of the United States has grown by leaps and bounds. I mean, think about it. Today, relative to the population, four times as many Americans go to church on a regular basis than at the time of our nation's founding. Religion in America isn't receding. It's just the opposite. Faith is gaining new life across America every day. And for my part, I've long believed that nothing is more important to the future of this nation. Faith has always been the wellspring of hope for millions of Americans from our very founding. Faith has been the foundation of our freedom as well. And religion was recognized by our founders as essential to the republic. It's a truth that's been taught here at Hillsdale. It would not be a new thought for this class. This is a place where faith flourishes. I, I know with admiration that Hillsdale will very soon open your new Christ Chapel, just a few short months. It'll be the largest college chapel built in America in almost 100 years. You know, Hillsdale has always recognized the wisdom beautifully expressed by our nation's first vice president, John Adams, who said, and I quote, our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people, and it is wholly inadequate for the government of any other. As all of you can attest here at Hillsdale, students and professors of all different faith traditions sharpen one another, just as iron sharpens iron. And as you prepare to leave this special place, I just encourage you to take, take your convictions into every facet of your life. Add your voices and your values to this great American experiment. Class of 2018, 
At Hillsdale College, you've received an education uniquely grounded in American ideals. But as the good book says, to whom much is given, much will be required. And so it is with each of you. Your education in the liberal arts has empowered you to conserve the foundations of our freedom. And you are now uniquely suited, and I believe you are uniquely called to renew the fabric of our national life with your character and with your ideals. Make no mistake about it, this is an ongoing and monumental task. It's not for the faint of heart or the small-minded. It will require courage and tenacity and greatness of spirit. At times, you will face opposition, even ridicule, for taking a stand for what you know to be right. But as you've learned here at Hillsdale, strength rejoices in the challenge. And remember, the most heroic acts and the greatest feats aren't the stuff of headlines and fame. They're actually to be found in the daily choices that you'll make and the habits that you've already begun to form. Ultimately, whether you become a part of redeeming and renewing the time comes down to whether you live what you've learned here at Hillsdale College. And so I urge you with the greatest respect Continue to grow as men and women of character. Continue to forge friendships that will help you grow as a person and pursue what's right. Form strong, vibrant, and loving families, the foundation of our free society where you pass along our cherished values to the next generation. Continue to build strong communities, those little platoons that shape all who dwell within them and in the process shape America itself. And never forget that timeless wisdom once enshrined on that old sign on M99. Hillsdale, it's the people. <laughs> so thank you for the honor of addressing you today. And as I close, let me encourage you. Hillsdale Class of 2018, have faith. Faith in yourselves, proven by what you've accomplished to get you to this very day. Faith in the principles and the ideals that you learned here, principles that bind us together as a people and give purpose to our nation. Faith that America is rising and that you have a role to play in redeeming the time. And lastly, I pray that you'll also leave this place with faith. As Winston Churchill reflected before our Congress that in his words, some great purpose and design is being worked out here below, of which we have the honor to be faithful servants. And trust that he who brought you this far will never leave you nor forsake you, because he never will. If you hold fast to him, if you live according to all that you've learned and the examples that you have seen in this special place, if you rededicate yourselves to the noble mission that has always animated the graduates of this college, I just know, in the bottom of my heart, Right after we get done making this nation great again, your generation will make America greater than ever before. So congratulations. The class of 2018, you did it. This day is yours. Your future starts today. God bless you. God bless Hillsdale College. And God bless the United States of America. That beautiful speech 
was a direct radiation from the fine character of Mike Pence, but I'm not sure Stephen Ford should have told him some of that stuff he told him. <laughs> Where is Ford? He's probably hiding. Karen Pence is the second lady of the United States of America. She has been the first lady of Indiana. She holds the B.S. degree and the M.S. degree from Butler University. She taught school for 25 years. She has founded several charities to help and guide the youth along the path that the Vice President just indicated. She is an award-winning artist, especially for her illustrations in a book, a children's book by her daughter Charlotte that my wife has been looking at and says that it's just gorgeous. You should get it. It's called Marlon Bundy's A Day in the Life of the Vice President. She is the wife of Mike Pence since 1985, and she is the mother of Michael, Charlotte, and Audrey. Mike, Mike and Karen, would you come forward, please? Upon the recommendation of the faculty of Hillsdale College and with the authority vested in me by its board of trustees, I, I confer upon Karen Sue Pence and Mike Pence the honorary degrees Doctor of Public Service. just offered Karen Pence a job at the Hillsdale Academy. <laughs> <laughs> the Vice President actually knows that we invited him to get her here. We have a new trustee from a friend of several years now. Uh, he was raised in Slavic Village in Cleveland. He's a member of the 1962 graduating class of Benedictine High School. He graduated from Cleveland State with a bachelor's degree and an MBA from the University of Virginia. He went into business. He worked for the Ohio Sealy Company, mattress company, and became the president of it. So he was the boss. And then he writes that over philosophic differences, must have been some bigger boss than he, I guess, he left them and decided, and decided to go into competition with the biggest mattress company in the world. He founded the original mattress factory in 1990, and it has thrived. He says it's because he just had one principle. I think that was the philosophic difference he had. Always do the right thing. He's a TV personality, maybe not lately, but uh, he used to advertise his uh, uh, mattresses on television in Ohio, and uh, I, I've heard, I, I tell people that I know him now, and I'll tell you, oh, the mattress guy, they say. He's a man of uh, high principle. Uh, I got the idea he might join our board of trustees because of the questions that he would ask me. Uh, they were uh, smart, how's this, how's that? He knew how to read the financial statements of the college, and first time I offered him to be on the board and the first time I offered him an honorary degree, he turned me down flat, both, with the argument, I don't want anything, won't take anything. Well, I prevailed, but in the name of duty. 
You should do this, I said. Because, you know, you seniors should remember this. If you can do a good thing, then you must. Not up to you. Patricia Trzynski grew up in the same neighborhood as her husband, Ron. She graduated from Holy Name High School. She married Ron in 1966. She worked as a clerk for a while for the Cuyahoga County Probate Court, and then she started having children, and after that, grandchildren. She has six of those children and some grandchildren. Sixty, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> she takes care of them and of her church and of her neighbors and of her community. She is the vice president of the Trzinski Foundation, and she is the president of the Trzinski family. <laughs> Ron and Patricia, will you come forward, please? better for Karen Pence to teach here than at the University of Indiana, wouldn't it? <laughs> Under the direction of James Holloman, the superb Hillsdale College Chamber Choir.
Thank you, Jim. The senior class president is Rozzy Lane. He comes from North Carolina, majors in politics and history. He's been on the Student Federation, A Few Good Men, Young Americas for Freedom, the College Republicans, RA in his dormitory. That means we think he was a leader. He's going to the Notre Dame Law School after graduation, and he hopes then to be a naval officer. It's easy to make fun of Razi. It's almost as easy to make fun of Razi as of Jacob Weaver. <laughs> but I'm done with that now. Razi is one of the most noble-minded young men I know. Razi Lane. Thank you. Vice President, Mrs. Pence, Dr. Arne, Hillsdale College family, thank you for this opportunity. To the class of 2018, I am honored to serve as your class president. Your love and encouragement means more to me than you can ever know. We seniors are proud to be joined by the Vice President of the United States and the Second Lady, Mike and Karen Pence. On behalf of the Hillsdale College graduating class of 2018, we are grateful for their visit today. <laughs> to our faculty, we could not be more thankful. Because of you, we are inspired to become the men and women of character that God created us to be. Finally, graduating with us are four United States Marine Corps officers, Mitchell Mutard, Gene Pendergrass, Charles Ahe, and Santiago Quintana. On behalf of the class of 2018, we thank you for your service. Thank you. Although the world beyond our walls is foreboding, we have every reason to take heart. Hillsdale College classrooms have a long and proud history of training men and women who courageously rise to meet the challenges of our world. 420 of Hillsdale's forefathers enlisted in the Union Army. Sergeant Moses Luce of the 4th Michigan Infantry demonstrated the Charger spirit when he charged through a field of fire to save the life of a fellow student and classmate, Asher LaFleur. Luce's story typifies the Hillsdale legacy, and today, fellow graduates, with great honor. We adopt their legacy as our own. Hillsdale College students are also proud to serve their communities. I recall when a few good men crew redecorated Ms. Cheryl Falk's apartment last fall. Our project brought tears of joy to her eyes. These moments define us both as a class and as young men and women. To graduate with you, for me, is a high honor. From students to staff, Hillsdale's kindness shines through. One evening, Mr. John Mack, a security employee, shared with me something that I will never forget. Ruzzy, he said, if I can live my whole life and only touch one heart each day, then son, I have lived a life worth living. Mr. Mack's wisdom is inspiring. Encourage everyone you meet to be the best person that they can be. Today, commencement marks more for us than a graduation. We are called by the high tradition of our predecessors to bear the torch of truth in an ever-darkening world. We are not promised an easy future, but our times call us to excellence, never to despair. In the words of Abigail Adams, great necessities call out great virtues. When a mind is raised and animated to the scenes that engage the heart, then those qualities which otherwise lay dormant wake into life and form the character of the hero and the statesman. Many will test our resolve. Others will certainly deride us for it. May we remind them that we are men and women of Hillsdale College. We do not surrender to the trials of life. We rejoice in their challenge. <laughs> Psalm 39 teaches that the measure of our days is unknown. What will we do with the blessings we've been given? My prayer is that we would live lives worthy of the legacy that we today stand to inherit. For our truly great leaders are the humble souls who, through small acts of sacrifice, positively transform the lives of others. May we remember that our time on earth is but brief. It is incumbent upon us 
to spend it well, joyfully extolling the good, the true, and the beautiful that we have here so come to cherish. May God bless each of your futures, and may he continue his blessing upon the great and noble work of Hillsdale College. Thank you. That was great. I'm glad I didn't make fun of him. <laughs> Hillsdale College is governed by the best board of trustees I ever saw, and I would ask its members to stand up and be recognized, please. Cleve Delp has got a kid, Dugan, who's about to walk across this stage, and Dugan will be the third of the Delps. I bet the girls are here. And uh, there are 19 more Delp children still to come. <laughs> will the candidate for doctoral degrees please stand? Mm. They're the first. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of Hillsdale College and with the authority vested in me by its Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you the degree for which you have been a candidate and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities to which you are entitled and obliged. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Pastrito. Will the Doctor of Philosophy graduates in politics please come forward? Nathan Gill. Kathleen Claire Thompson. Thank you. Nathan and Kathleen are the first to receive an earned doctorate from Hillsdale College in its 174-year history. Please join me in congratulating them. Will the candidates for master's degrees please stand? Let me ask Stevie. Upon the rec recommendation of the faculty of Hillsdale College and with the authority vested in me by its board of trustees, I confer upon each of you the degree for which you have been a candidate and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities to which you are entitled and obliged. Dr. Pastrito. Will the Master of Arts graduates in politics please come forward? Jonathan Case. William John Casey. Maureen Collins.
Stephen Maselli Ganaprau. Brandon Curtis Hadlock. And Alyssa Catherine Lee. Stevie Nicole Nichols. Sarah Jane Onken. Congratulations. Zachary Dijon Rogers. Congratulations. Casey J. Wheatland. Congratulations to all of our master's graduates. <laughs> Dr. Arn, the awarding of graduate degrees is complete. Will the Hillsdale College class of 2018 please stand? On the recommendation of the faculty of Hillsdale College and with the authority vested in me by its board of trustees, I confer upon each of you the degree for which you have been a candidate and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities to which you are entitled and obliged. Congratulations. Be seated. Will the candidates in accounting please come forward? Adam Allen Stotharkis, Bachelor of Arts, Accounting. David Stedman Lowry, Bachelor of Science, Accounting, Departmental Honors, Accounting. Amanda Marie Regal, Bachelor of Arts, Accounting, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Accounting. Summer Hope Burkholder, Bachelor of Arts, Accounting, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Accounting. Gretchen Marie Wellmeyer, Bachelor of Arts, Accounting, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Accounting. David Preston Stone, a Bachelor of Arts, Accounting, Magna Cum Laude, Accounting, Departmental Honors, Accounting. Samantha Jane Howard, Bachelor of Science, Accounting. Pilar. Pilar. Pilar Patricia Furlong, Bachelor of Arts, Accounting. Logan Derek Kaufman, Bachelor of Arts, Accounting. Laura Blair Sanderson, a Bachelor of Arts, American Studies, Departmental Honors, American Studies. <laughs> Hannah Elizabeth Watts, Bachelor of Arts, American Studies, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, American Studies. <laughs> Cassidy Carol Siftestad, Bachelor of Arts, American Studies, Magna Cum Laude. 
Michael Christopher Lucchese, Bachelor of Arts, American Studies, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, American Studies. John Robert Gage, Bachelor of Arts, American Studies, Cum Laude. Will the candidates in art please come forward? Madeline Rachel Grieb, Bachelor of Arts, Art, Latin, and Mathematics, Summa Cum Laude. Elsa Karen Lagerquist, Bachelor of Arts, English and Art, Magna Cum Laude. Thank you. Elise Marie Kleins, Bachelor of Arts, Art and Spanish, Magna Cum Laude. Isaac Nehemiah Dell, Bachelor of Arts, Art, Departmental Honors, Art. Anna Elizabeth Demetitis, Bachelor of Arts, American Studies and Art, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, American Studies. Emily Marie Rinaldi, Bachelor of Science, Art, Magna Cum Laude. Rachel Lynn Reynolds, Bachelor of Arts, Art, Departmental Honors, Art. Patrick Robert Lucas, Bachelor of Arts, Art and English. Summer Marie Smith, Bachelor of Arts, English and Art, Magna Cum Laude. Stephanie Ann Rose, Bachelor of Arts, Art. Will the candidates in biochemistry please come forward? Casey Paul Skukow, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Biochemistry. Trey Dwayne Van Aken, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Biochemistry. I'm the third. James Irvin Friedel III, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, Cum Laude. Luke Patrick Miller, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Biochemistry. Emma Karakoleva, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, Cum Laude. Andrea Jasmine Lee, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Biochemistry. Lauren Ashley Barless, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Biochemistry. Madeline Victoria Jepson, Bachelor of Arts, Biochemistry, Magna Cum Laude. Anna Fair Mathis, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, Cum Laude. Sarah Ewing Benson, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, Cum Laude. Taylor Michelle Hannell, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry. Emma Lee Klassener, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, Cum Laude. Lillian Kate Quinones, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Biochemistry. Anna Susan Meckel, Bachelor of Arts, Biochemistry, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Biochemistry, Valedictorian. <laughs> Madison Lynn Frame, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Biochemistry. <laughs> Caitlin Renee Burkaw, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Biochemistry. Pre -R. Pre -R. Gabriel Mark Joseph Priar, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Biochemistry. Brenna Anita Tremp, Bachelor of Arts, Biology. Louisa Sofia Wazalewski, Bachelor of Science, Biology. Lauren Grace Melcher, Bachelor of Science, Biology. Emma Virginia Carvel, Bachelor of Science, Biology. Lydia Joy Sipol, Bachelor of Science, Biology, Cum Laude. Jonathan David Coote, Jr., Bachelor of Science, Biology, Cum Laude. Douglas Leon Phillips, Bachelor of Science, Biology. Taylor Marie Zimmer, Bachelor of Science, Biology, Cum Laude. Stephen Daniel Sartor, Bachelor of Science, Biology, Magna Cum Laude. Abigail Naomi Angel, Bachelor of Science Biology, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors Biology. 
Randy Lee Block, Bachelor of Science Biology, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors Biology. Andrea Lynn Wallace, Bachelor of Science Biology, Magna Cum Laude. Julia Catherine Hoida, Bachelor of Science Biology, Magna Cum Laude. Michaela Marie Miller, Bachelor of Science Biology, Departmental Honors Biology. Kelsey Francis Scockman, Bachelor of Science Biology, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors Biology. Monica Wanjiru, Bachelor of Arts Biology, Cum Laude. Benjamin Peter Winger, Bachelor of Arts Biology, Cum Laude. Alexis Teresa Zeller, Bachelor of Science Biology. Will the candidates in chemistry please come forward? Sarah Elizabeth Kilgore, Bachelor of Science, Chemistry, Cum Laude. Jacob Edward Ross, Bachelor of Science, Chemistry, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Chemistry. Stephen Christoph Neuss, Bachelor of Science, Chemistry, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Chemistry. Devin Patrice Ward, Bachelor of Science, Chemistry and Applied Mathematics. Delaney Nicole Lehman, Bachelor of Science, Chemistry, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Chemistry, Salutatorian. Micah Wesley Hines, Bachelor of Science, Chemistry and Music, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Chemistry, Departmental Honors, Music. Jacob William Han, Bachelor of Arts, Chemistry, Cum Laude. Zachary Andrew Van Orman, Bachelor of Science, Chemistry, Cum Laude. Douglas Randall Wyman, Bachelor of Science, Chemistry. Will the candidates in Christian Studies please come forward? Faith Rebecca Liebing, Bachelor of Arts, Christian Studies. Victoria Hope Wickman, Bachelor of Science, Christian Studies. Danielle Hope Rudiswelli, Bachelor of Arts, Christian Studies. Will the candidates in Classical Studies please come forward? Megan Nicole Hazelton, Bachelor of Arts, Latin Summa Cum Laude. Emily Ann Barnum, Bachelor of Arts, Greek, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Greek. Shea Milton Whitmore, Bachelor of Arts Greek, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors Greek. John Robert Lemire James, Bachelor of Arts Classical Studies, Summa Cum Laude. Sam J. Phillips, Bachelor of Arts Classical Studies. Marie Anastasia Hill, Bachelor of Arts Classical Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Brian Christopher Hall, Bachelor of Arts Latin, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors Latin. Michael Jerome Howard, Bachelor of Arts Loughton, Cum Laude. Mark Martin Chemnitz Harrison, Bachelor of Arts, Classical Studies and History. Tara Nicole Ung, Bachelor of Arts, Politics and Latin, Summa Cum Laude. Will the candidates in Economics please come forward. Jordan Lee Heights, Bachelor of Science, Economics and Mathematics, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Economics. Ian Dupre, Bachelor of Science, Economics. John Dugan Delp, Bachelor of Arts, Economics and Spanish, Mega Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Economics. Grace Elizabeth Schroeder, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Alexa Lee Tipton, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Economics. Cecilia Marie Ballet, Bachelor of Arts, Economics and French, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Economics. Adrienne Rose Carrier, Bachelor of Arts, Politics and Economics, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Economics. Rachel Catherine Baer, Bachelor of Arts, Economics and Politics, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Economics. 
Chloe Vanessa Olgren, Bachelor of Arts Economics, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors Economics. Evan Michael Tandy, Bachelor of Science, Applied Mathematics and Economics, Departmental Honors Economics. Nathan David Jones, Bachelor of Science, Applied Mathematics and Economics, Departmental Honors Economics. Madeline Marina Musa Reed, Bachelor of Science Economics, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors Economics. Cassidy Marie Splon, Bachelor of Science Economics, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors Economics. Claudia Meredith Sladek, Bachelor of Arts Economics, Magna Cum Laude. Mark Andrew Englert, Bachelor of Arts Economics. Michelle Allison Barra, Bachelor of Arts Economics, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors Economics. Micaiah Noel Rogers, Bachelor of Science Economics. Zachary Wood Pistorius, Bachelor of Arts Economics. Stephen Michael Bennett, Bachelor of Arts Economics, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors Economics. Jake Anthony Kenyon, Bachelor of Arts Economics. Lucas McKinley Bladder, Bachelor of Arts Economics, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors Economics. Alexandra K. Howell, Bachelor of Science, Economics and Mathematics, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors Economics. Scott McClellan, BA, Economics. Catherine Emily Wright, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Cum Laude. Nathan Daniel Hollern, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Magna Cum Laude. Charles Thomas Ahi, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry and Economics. Anna Marie de la Pena Summers, Bachelor of Science, Economics. Tyler J. Krieger, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Bargain cost. Jackson Levi Bargainquast, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Economics. Peter Michael O'Rourke, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. David Ryan Whitson, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Brendan Samuel Noble, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Economics. Steve Sturkenberg, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Gregory Mark Ferrison, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Economics. Casey Nicole Reeves, Bachelor of Arts, Spanish and Economics, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Economics. Santiago Hatay Quintara, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Thomas Carl Gans, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Magna Cum Laude. Sergey Bosick, Bachelor of Science, Economics. George Tusher and Sede, Bachelor of Science, Economics. David Adam Schwartzman, Bachelor of Science, Economics and Applied Mathematics, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Economics. Tanner Orion Wright, Bachelor of Science, Economics and Applied Mathematics, Magna Cum Laude. Will the candidates in English please come forward? Daniel Robert Cody, Bachelor of Arts, English, Magna Cum Laude. Brendan Richard Clary, Bachelor of, English, Bachelor of Arts, English, Cum Laude. Aaron Bayless Andrews, Bachelor of Arts, English, Magna Cum Laude. Ellen Marie Sweet, Bachelor of Arts English, Summa Cum Laude. Heather Nicole Woodhouse, Bachelor of Arts English, Cum Laude. Jacob Andrew Kunrat, Bachelor of Arts English. Matthew Jacob Wiley, Bachelor of Arts English. Sorry. 
Sarah Angele Dascupta, Bachelor of Arts, English. Kayona Samina Shabazz, Bachelor of Arts, English. Hannah Christine Niemeyer, Bachelor of Arts, English, summa cum laude. Madison Lee Moore, Bachelor of Arts, English, magna cum laude. Megan Elizabeth Perks, Bachelor of Arts, English, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, English. Rachel Caddis Watson, Bachelor of Arts, English, magna cum laude. Brendan Andrew Ammerman, Bachelor of Arts, English, magna cum laude. Holly Magdalena Ermer, Bachelor of Science, English, cum laude. <laughs> Catherine June Davenport, Bachelor of Arts, English and Art, summa cum laude. <laughs> Stephen Donald Savas, Bachelor of Arts, English, cum laude. <laughs> Rebecca Allison Willis, Bachelor of Arts, English, cum laude. Jennifer Lynn Malcolm, Bachelor of Arts, English, cum laude. Emily Alice Blatter, Bachelor of Arts, History and English, cum laude. Thank you. Allison Ruth Deckert, Bachelor of Arts, English, summa cum laude. Hold on just one moment. Kylie Victoria Deal, Bachelor of Arts, English, magna cum laude. And Teresa Holtz, Bachelor of Arts, English, cum laude. Sarah Christine Borger, Bachelor of Arts, English, and Spanish, cum laude. Laura Catherine Forsyth, Bachelor of Arts, English, magna cum laude. Chandler David Ride, Bachelor of Arts, English. <laughs> Teresa Marie Smith, Bachelor of Arts, English. <laughs> Rebecca Lynn Reeb, Bachelor of Arts, English. <laughs> Bridget Christine Hall, Bachelor of Arts, English, magna cum laude. <laughs> Anastasia Ruth Fragerio, Bachelor of Arts, English, magna cum laude. Elsa Christine Epling, Bachelor of Arts, English. Samuel Michael Potter, Bachelor of Arts, English. Dustin Ray Platon, Bachelor of Arts, English, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors, English. Will the candidates in exercise science please come forward? Jordan Anthony Hallamert, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Eric Joseph Coggan, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science, Cum Laude. Spencer Owen Nels, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science, Cum Laude. John Robert Lawrence Terry, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Lane Andrew White, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Haley Lynn Lawrence, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science, Summa Cum Laude. Laura Katherine Williamson, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Lindy Jane Wonders, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Nicholas Ryan Tremere, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Hold on just a second. Will the candidates in financial management please come forward? <laughs> Ryan Gregory Badowski, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management, Cum Laude. 
Austin Howard Adams, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management. Allison Lynn Dittmer, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management. Alexandra Rose Leonard, Bachelor of Science, Financial Management and Applied Mathematics, Cum Laude, Departmental Autos, Financial Management. Denton Lee Williams, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management. Timothy J. Mills, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management. Maxwell Henry Pfeiffer, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management. Andrew Carl Wilcox, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management. Nicholas Daniel Chappelle, Bachelor of Science, Financial Management. Joseph Anthony Torres III, Bachelor of Science, Financial Management, Departmental Honors, Financial Management. John Joseph Burke, Bachelor of Science, Financial Management, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Financial Management. Drew P. Liskey, Bachelor of Science, Financial Management and Mathematics, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Financial Management. Christopher Lee Jacobson, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Ma Management. John Duddy Kearney, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management. Allison Catherine Arthur, Bachelor of Arts, Economics and Financial Management, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Economics. Charlotte Amelia McFadden, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Financial Management. Christina Lauren Middlestead, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management. Anna Mae Eby, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Financial Management. Seth William Overla, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management. Paul Matthew Galloway, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Financial Management. Matthew James Hall, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management, Cum Laude. Maxwell Hayden Smith, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management, Departmental Honors, Financial Management. Jonathan Park Anderson, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management, Departmental Honors, Financial Management. Luke John Enns, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Financial Management. Peter Joseph Flynn, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Financial Management. Josh Joseph Orlasky, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management. Mark Nicholas Bewley, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Management, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Financial Management. Will the candidates in French please come forward? Mark Joseph Nida, Bachelor of Arts, English and French, Cum Laude. Catherine Jane Shai, Bachelor of Arts French, Magna Cum Laude. Joanna Beth Croker, Bachelor of Arts French, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors French. Therese Catherine Burgess, Bachelor of Arts French. Madeline Elizabeth Fry, Bachelor of Arts French, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors French. Elizabeth Amy Garner, Bachelor of Arts French, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors French. Will the candidates in German please come forward? Aaron August Schilling, Bachelor of Arts, English and German. Emily Ann Dahlberg, Bachelor of Science, History and German. Casey Logan Baus, Bachelor of Arts, German. Paul Edward Keenan, Bachelor of Arts, German, summa cum laude. Joanna Rose Westerhoff, Bachelor of Arts, German, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors, German. Lillian Renee Martin, Bachelor of Arts, German, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, German. 
Rachel Lord Smith, Bachelor of Arts, Exercise Science and German, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, German. William Hunter Crockett, Bachelor of Arts, Political Economy and German. Carl Matthias Berg, Bachelor of Arts, History and German, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, History. Will the candidates in Greek please come forward? Candidates in History, please come forward. Jacob Reynolds Weaver, Bachelor of Arts, History, Depar Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, History. Joshua Bryant Brooks, Bachelor of Arts, History. Joshua Michael Schmid, Bachelor of Arts History, Magna Cum Laude. Jacob Paul Edward Peterson, Bachelor of Arts History. Ethan Luke Williams, Bachelor of Arts History, Cum Laude. Kevin Koichi Wilkinson, Bachelor of Arts, History. Bryce William Snyder, Bachelor of Arts, History. Kiersey Kathleen Eby, Bachelor of Arts, History, Cum Laude. Jessica M. Schuler, Bachelor of Arts, History. Zachary David Stone, Bachelor of Arts, History. Reuben Levi Blake, Bachelor of Arts, History. Christopher Layton Riley, Bachelor of Arts, History, Magna Cum Laude. Nathaniel Shea Trainer, Bachelor of Arts, History, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, History. Aaron Ava Wonders, Bachelor of Arts History, Cum Laude. Sarah Grace Strubing, Bachelor of Arts History, Cum Laude. Madeline Clara Domalakis, Bachelor of Arts History and Politics, Summa Cum Laude. Dean Reed Sinclair, Bachelor of Arts History. Grace Victoria Moran, Bachelor of Arts History and Art. Ralston Danielle Tucker, Bachelor of Arts, History. Gina Marie Howersat, Bachelor of Arts, History, Magna Cum Laude. Stacy Eden Eager, Bachelor of Arts, History, Magna Cum Laude. Anne Bernadette Peterson, Bachelor of Arts, History. Hans Frederick Noyes, Bachelor of Science, History, Cum Laude. Elizabeth Cameron Turner, Bachelor of Arts, History. Chandler Michelle Lash, Bachelor of Arts, History. Glennis Rose Gillio, Bachelor of Arts, History and Theater, Cum Laude. Mary Teresa Darrow, Bachelor of Arts, History, Cum Laude. Finnegan Patrick Cleary, Bachelor of Arts, History, Cum Laude. Sarah Mackenzie Roddick, Bachelor of Arts, History, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Kyle Stanley Aldrich, Bachelor of Arts, History and Political Economy, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Economics. John Michael Spear, Bachelor of Arts, History. Ian James McRae, Bachelor of Arts, History and Politics, Departmental Honors, History. Will the candidates in International Studies and Business please come forward? Mackenzie Nicole Yaussi, Bachelor of Arts, International Studies and Business and Foreign Language. Will the candidates in Latin please come forward? Will the candidates in Marketing and Management please come forward? Matthew C. Schran, Bachelor of Arts, Marketing and Management, Cum Laude. 
Jacob Lawrence Bull, Bachelor of Arts, Marketing Management, magna cum laude. William Scott Jones, Bachelor of Arts, Marketing Management. Kyle Jacob Marsh, Bachelor of Arts, Marketing Management. Daniel Peter Drummond, Bachelor of Arts, Marketing Management and History, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors, Marketing Management. Brittany Alexandra Mann, Bachelor of Arts, Marketing Management. Ashley Lynn Moran, Bachelor of Arts, Marketing Management. Kayla Marie Stetzel, Bachelor of Arts, Marketing Management, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors, Marketing Management. <laughs> Hannah Francis Quapitz, Bachelor of Arts, Marketing Management. <laughs> Kai Thomas Kababik, Bachelor of Arts, Marketing Management. <laughs> Joseph Raymond Pepilardo, Pepe Bachelor of Arts, Marketing Management. <laughs> Joshua Scott Liebhauser, Bachelor of Arts, Marketing Management. Bo Charles Jarrett, Bachelor of Arts, Marketing Management. For the candidates in mathematics and applied mathematics, please come forward. Colin James Saunders, Bachelor of Science, Applied Mathematics. Jean Marie Pendergross, Bachelor of Science, Mathematics, Cum Laude. Duncan Grave Oils, Bachelor of Science, Economics and Mac Mathematics, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Economics. <laughs> Gary Daniel Dunkerley, Bachelor of Science, Mathematics and English. <laughs> Justin John Rogers, Bachelor of Science, Mathematics, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Mathematics. Ryan Joseph Asher, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics. Aiden Michael Kunath, Bachelor of Science, Accounting and Mathematics, Departmental Honors, Accounting. Chopic. Daniel Chopic, Bachelor of Science, Mathematics. Kirk David Williams, Bachelor of Science, Mathematics and Economics, Departmental Honors, Mathematics. Will the candidates in music please come forward? Brendan Matthew King, Bachelor of Arts Music, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors Music. Jonathan David Hendrickson, Bachelor of Arts Music. Sasena Elizabeth Finnegan, Bachelor of Arts Music. Sarah Colleen Schutte, Bachelor of Arts Music, Magna Cum Laude. Quentin Stewart Herman, Bachelor of Arts Music. Will the candidates in philosophy please come forward? Samuel Douglas Adamson, Bachelor of Arts, English and Philosophy, Magna Cum Laude. Andrew John Kern, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy. Caleb Michael Harmon, Bachelor of Science, Philosophy. Will the candidates in philosophy and religion please come forward? Nathan Steven Steinmeier, Bachelor of Science, Philosophy and Religion. <laughs> Hannah Christine McIntyre, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy and Religion, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Amalea Christine Hansen, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy and Religion. <laughs> Will the candidates in physics please come forward? Rebecca K. Roundy, Bachelor of Science, Physics and Music, Cum Laude. <laughs> Will 
Will the candidates in political economy please come forward? The Noah Knudsen Jossens Bachelor of Arts, Political Economy, Cum Laude. Abraham Paul Orth, Bachelor of Arts, Political Economy. Charles Scott Panola, Bachelor of Arts, Political Economy. Anthony James Windall, Bachelor of Arts, Political Economy. Brandon William Beischer, Bachelor of Arts, Political Economy. Jonathan Daniel Moy, Bachelor of Arts, Political Economy. Will the candidates in politics please come forward? Nathaniel Robert Lehman, Bachelor of Arts, Politics, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Politics. Liana J. Pierce, Bachelor of Arts, English and Politics, Cum Laude. Priyana Christine Noble, Bachelor of Arts Politics, Summa Cum Laude. Kara Ann Schmidt, Bachelor of Arts Politics, Summa Cum Laude. Christopher Dean Jones, Bachelor of Arts Politics and Religion, Magna Cum Laude. Noah McDonald Weinrich, Bachelor of Arts Politics, Magna Cum Laude. Claire Elise Hughes, Bachelor of Arts, Politics and French, Magna Cum Laude. Morgan Elizabeth Brownfield, Bachelor of Arts, Politics, Magna Cum Laude. Joshua Dames Palladino, Bachelor of Arts, Politics and Economics, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Economics. English Elizabeth Holcomb Hinton, Bachelor of Arts, Politics, Magna Cum Laude. Macy Lane Mount, Bachelor of Arts, Politics, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Politics. Gianna Nicole Eden, Bachelor of Arts, Politics, Summa Cum Laude. Brant Christoph Christopher Hoyle Cohen, Bachelor of Arts, Politics. Sloan Alexander McDonough, Bachelor of Arts, Politics. William Joshua Lee, Bachelor of Arts, Politics. Andrew Christopher Lang Reyes, Bachelor of Arts, Politics. Joshua Dean Pragaki, Bachelor of Science, Politics, Magna Cum Laude. Razi Siddiqui Lane, Bachelor of Arts, Politics and History, Magna Cum Laude. Callista Lily Ring, Bachelor of Arts, Politics and French, Summa Cum Laude. Peyton Emma Bowen, Bachelor of Arts, Politics. Victoria Jean Watson, Bachelor of Arts, Politics, Cum Laude. <laughs> Madeline Ann Conover, Bachelor of Arts, Politics and Spanish, Cum Laude. <laughs> Lindsay Elise Bice, Bachelor of Arts, Politics. Grace Marie Vandergriff, Bachelor of Arts, Politics. Zoe Rose Harns, Bachelor of Arts, Politics. Jackson Giovanni Ventrella, Bachelor of Arts, Politics. Jeffrey Cannon Freeberg, Bachelor of Arts, Politics, Cum Laude. Mitchell Scott Mutard, Bachelor of Arts, Politics, Cum Laude. James Edward Reeb, Bachelor of Arts, Politics, Cum Laude.
Will the candidates in psychology please come forward? Janina Grace Imperial, Bachelor of Science, Psychology, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Psychology. Mary Frances Blunderman, Bachelor of Science, Psychology, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Psychology. Abraham Murrow Abraham Murrow Masigwa Norman, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Matthew Allen Coleman, Bachelor of Science, Psychology, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Psychology. Colby Kevin Clark, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Psychology. Hannah Catherine Brewer, Bachelor of Science, Psychology, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Psychology. Michaela Moniz Overton, Bachelor of Science, Psychology, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Psychology. Morgan Connie Blair, Bachelor of Science, Psychology. Jessica Ray Kopmeyer, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Psychology. Elise Francis Hutchinson, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology and Art, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Psychology. Elena Lorraine Rumlow, Bachelor of Science, Psychology and Political Economy, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Psychology and Political Economy. Marie Elizabeth Tyson, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology and English, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Psychology. Will the candidates in religion please come forward? Matthew Austin Kendrick, Bachelor of Arts, Religion, Cum Laude. Tamur Jamil Khan, Bachelor of Arts, Religion, Magna Cum Laude. Andrea Nicole Bodery, Bachelor of Arts, Religion. Will the candidates in rhetoric and public address please come forward? Megan Marie Kane, Bachelor of Arts, Rhetoric and Public Address, Cum Laude. Alexandra Gabriela Negrich, Bachelor of Arts, Rhetoric and Public Address. Fiona Brennan Shea, Bachelor of Arts, Rhetoric and Public Address. Will the candidates in Spanish please come forward? Emily Clara Joan Balog, Bachelor of Arts, Spanish. Jessica Degree, Bachelor of Arts, English and Spanish. John Sheeran Duffy, Bachelor of Arts, Applied Mathematics and Spanish. Katrina Elizabeth Mercero, Bachelor of Arts, Spanish and Politics, Magna Cum Laude. Maria Claire Grinis, Bachelor of Science, Spanish, Summa Cum Laude. Laurel Elizabeth Nitzel, Bachelor of Arts, Spanish and English, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Spanish. Alexis Victoria Pierce, Bachelor of Arts, Spanish, Cum Laude. Will the candidates in Sociology and Social Thought please come forward? Sport management, theater, please come forward. There we go. Third time's the charm. Brooke Lynn Benson, Bachelor of Arts, History and Theater, Cum Laude. Elena Marie Creed, Bachelor of Arts, Theater and English, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Theater. Nikolai Alexander Dignati, Bachelor of Arts, History and Theater. If there are any other candidates who have not yet come forward, you may do so now. It's my honor on behalf of the Board of Trustees to congratulate you on 
your years of hard work and accomplishment here, and of course on your graduation today. If I go back some four and a half years, I salute you and your parents on your selection of Hillsdale College. I'll admit to a bit of bias, but I truly believe you could, have not, you could not have made a better choice. You might have received an education, or pardon me, I don't think you made your choice predicated on Hillsdale's widely held reputation for beautiful year-round weather. <laughs> My sense is, instead, you made your decision based on the school's reputation and the school's faculty. You might have received an education the quality of which would roughly equal that which you have received here at from but a handful of other schools across the country. From the providential Dr. Arne, through the not to be equal faculty, through the incredible administrators and the superb support staff, you have, in my estimation, received a degree from a college that has but one major fault. It is unique. Lost my train of thought, with apologies. Um, as you, as you go forward, oh my Lord, I apologize. My memorization skills are not what they were. Um, as you go forward, um, remember the classes you have had here, the professors you have had, they have no equal. Uh, and remember that you have a special obligation in that very few of your peers about the country share the knowledge that you possess. Use that knowledge well, use it wisely, use it daily. Again, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, our warmest congratulations to each and every one of you. As you go through life, do not lose touch with this important place. Godspeed. Thank you, Chairman Broadbeck. Please stand for the alma mater led by the Hills Hill College Chamber Choir. remain standing for the benediction. I invite the men to please take off their caps. 
May God the Father who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, preserve and sustain you. May God the Son who trampled down death by death, securing for us new life as the first fruits of the new creation, save and guide you. May God the Holy Spirit who gives us the resurrection of life of Jesus that we may call his Father our own, equip and strengthen you for every good work. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Holy Trinity, ever one, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. Yeah.